level across the top. What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Tag Shot and thank you guys for joining us. Happy New Year 2019. It's going to be a great year and hopefully you guys will uh, stay with us and uh, we can continue to grow here on YouTube. Uh, 2018 was an awesome year and I'm going to take you guys back, show you what we did throughout the year as far as gun reviews and today we're going to pick our top five favorite guns from 2018. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Really quick, our New Year's resolution for 2019 is to hit 100,000 subscribers. Now, things for us on the channel, they grow steadily, they don't grow rapidly, but they are at least still are growing, which is awesome. I mean, we have over 60,000 subscribers, which is, is huge. The goal for this year, 100,000 subscribers. So if you're just visiting us or maybe you come back and you watch the channel from time to time, Hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost you anything. When you hit the notification bell, you'll be uh, alerted anytime we upload a new video. Uh, that's our goal for the year. Help us hit that. We appreciate all the support. Let's take a look back at 2018, and then we will give you our top five. This is a completely different rifle with the suppressor on. This thing is loud and obnoxious and not really a whole lot of fun to shoot until you put the suppressor on and then it's it's like i said a completely different rifle it's quiet uh muzzle stays down it's just a it's just a different beast altogether All right, so what a nice shooter and the biggest change to the M MP M2.0 lineup. The, the biggest and best change, in my opinion, is the triggers. I tell you, man, when we ran the Gorilla ammunition, the uh, the subsonic ammo out of this thing with the suppressor, it was so quiet, man. So it was it, that was impressive. I like to see that. Wow! Holy crap! That is a big difference, yo. So we had a lot of great guns in 2018. 2019, I want to try to double the number. We only we actually had nine uh, new gun reviews that we did in 2018. This upcoming year, I want to try to double that number. And that means double the videos and everything that we do. Now, obviously, if we only produced nine videos last year, uh, we wouldn't be doing very well. Uh, so we throw a lot of mixture in there. We, we like to do um, comparison videos with guns that we've done in the past and new guns that we're doing, concealed carry videos, things like that. Try to keep everything fresh, but I want to double that number for this year. So a lot of resolutions and I'm going to, I'm going to try to stick with that, uh, for sure. But we could only pick five, which is pretty tough. And I got them written down in front of me in no particular order. Uh, our favorite handgun from last year, polymer striker fire gun, at least I could say. Uh, the CZ P10C. This gun 
really impressed me. It took me a long time to get my hands on one, but when I finally got my hands on one, it really impressed me and Mrs. Hexshot from the sights, the trigger, uh, the, the the whole fit and finish of the gun. That being uh, CZ's first striker fire gun, uh, I cannot wait to see what they do in a smaller subcompact or even a single stack option. Uh, they make an awesome gun and really the price on that thing. I think I got it for, with night sights. Um, I got it on, uh, I don't remember. It was under 500 bucks, two magazines, an awesome deal, a great gun. And that was our favorite striker fire polymer frame, uh, new gun from last year. Rifles, uh, the Ruger PC9 carbine. Uh, that gun just, it blew us away because of how uh, quiet it was, suppressed, um, and how much fun it was to shoot. It was just one of those guns. It was 9mm. It's a takedown version. Something you could throw in a backpack and go on a hunting trip with or, or whatever. Um, it, it's just a really awesome plinking type of gun and just really fun at the range. Um, it takes Ruger magazines and then you have options to take uh, Glock magazines, which is great. So a lot of variety there and it's a takedown which is pretty cool, and, and chambered in 9mm. I think that gives you a lot more options compared to the 22 takedown. Um, our favorite carry gun this year was the SIG P365. Now, I know a lot of people have had issues with the 365, especially the earlier versions. Uh, it seems like with the Gen 2, a lot of those issues have been mitigated, but there are still a lot of people out there that won't go to the 365 because of the issues that they seem with the earlier versions. It just kind of gets ingrained in your memory, even though something is, you know, has a lot of great attributes. That one bad thing, which is a big bad thing, by the way, um, can really hurt the image that's that that people have of a particular uh, gun, you know. And in this case, it being a carry gun, nobody wants their carry gun to fail, and I understand that. We have an update coming up, you know, very soon on the 365. And I could have done this update probably two months ago, but we continue to run rounds through it and make sure that we're not going to have the issues before I put the update up there. Um, I, I just want to make sure I run that gun as much as possible. But don't get that twisted. It set the standard for concealed carry guns now. I think that the days of six and seven round single stacks are going to go away. You know, SIG has kind of set the bar now for these other companies to say, well, if they can get 10 rounds in theirs, we can do it better with maybe without the issues and be able to uh, to to claim a lot of that market. Obviously, with the Glock 43X coming out, which I'm excited to get my hands on, you see evidence of that. But still, it set the bar, came with night sights, two magazines, 10 rounds, and a small gun the size uh, I think it was a little bit shorter or maybe the same size as a shield as far as the grip length. The weight was great. Everything about the gun was great. If they didn't have those issues coming out of the box, people would still be all over them. And to be honest with you, if you're lucky enough to find one in a gun shop, um, you should probably take a look at it and, and put your hands on it at least, you know, mess around with it a little bit. Pull the trigger on it at least. These things are still really kind of hard to find in gun shops, local gun shops anyways. So people are still buying them. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of people really do like them, but because of the issues, it's kind of given it a bad name. Uh, the CMMG Banshee, as far as SBRs, um, that rifle was just awesome. Now, shooting that gun unsuppressed was not a lot of fun. Shooting it suppressed was like shooting a uh, big bore 22. <laughs> I mean, really it was that, it was that smooth shooting. It was so quiet. It was a completely different gun with the suppressor on and an overall short profile. The coloration on that thing was just amazing. It takes AR mags, which is cool. And the 300 blackout round running the suppress, it, it just, it ran so good. And it was one of those fun guns for us. And that could be an amazing home defense round. Um, it could be an amazing home defense weapon. It could be an amazing um, gun for you to take to the range, whatever you want to do. It's a life and liberty type of gun. And the SBR, man, to me, I, ju I just really liked it. I thought it was cool and, um, and it rang great as well. So, and then, uh, and then the last one on the list this year, the Smith and Wesson 1911. To me, uh, the 1911 platform 
solidifies itself still today. Obviously, that's why companies are still making 1911s. And the Smith & Wesson, uh, in particular, is just a an awesome piece. It's not something I would carry. It's not something I would probably use for home defense. It's something I would take to the range and and show off, really. Now, when I, I show guns off, but I'm not going to show guns off and just leave them in the safe and then become a safe queen. That's not me. If I have a gun like that, I'm going to run it. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to get it dirty. I'm going to see how it does. But it still looks good while doing it, which is pretty awesome. Smith & Wesson uh, makes a very nice 1911. And hopefully we'll get some more down the line to compare it to. But our first 1911 uh, was a good one from Smith & Wesson. So out of the choices we had, those were our top five. If you disagree with our list altogether, make sure you leave your own list down in the comments below. And please, if there are any guns that you want to see us review in this coming up year, join us on Patreon because this is where I want to start doing a lot of the specific gun models that we can at least get our hands on. Uh, that's where I want to start uh, trying to focus my gun reviews and and allow you guys to have a little bit of the control of what goes on in the channel. As a matter of fact, our newest gun or one of our newest guns, the Ruger SP-101 is a Patreon selected gun, uh, a first one ever. So if you want to if you want to have a little bit of input, actually a lot of input of what goes on into the channel, join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar. You can support the channel and do some cool things with us. So thank you guys for watching. This is going to be an awesome year. Thank you for support. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.